Destiny 2 Forsaken is everything I could have hoped for in an expansion to Bungie's shared world shooter and more. With impressive cutscenes, including the gut-punching death of Cade 6, it adds drama and a darkness that keeps me motivated. The raid offers intricate challenges and larger-than-life bosses to destroy for any team brave enough to face them for a chance at great rewards. All of this and a plethora of incentivization improvements to the power level grind make Destiny 2 feel like the game I fell in love with again. All right, partner, this is a Cade Riff in six. Watch me for the changes and uh, try to keep up. Now let's go to prison! <laughs> Each new and returning character brings a welcome voice that adds a new mystery to the universe we thought we knew so well. Spider specifically acts as a catalyst to weave the adventures right into the campaign by sending you on missions around the Tangled Shore. It's nice to see this adjustment in delivery in contrast to the previous approach where they were easy to miss. It's also refreshing to see a new enemy type, the Scorn. Their unique character models and behaviors shake up the combat loop after years of taken versions of everything we faced before. Talking about the raid, I'll do my best to avoid spoilers, but if you want to completely avoid them, skip ahead about two minutes. The Last Wish raid begins with a few fairly easy encounters, but the later missions have a level of intricacy to them that will push any team to their limits. I absolutely think that this demanding design is exactly how a raid encounter should be, and I hope Bungie continues with this trend. Once the first team completed the raid, there were a few in-game changes to the Dreaming City, which is an incredibly smart way to help players become legend for their efforts. It also unlocked a new strike that offers more lore and backstory that casts the events of this victory in a new light. It's a great example of how the excellent storytelling and gameplay extends to the new strike missions. In The Warden of Nothing, you visit a new area of the prison where Cade died. Rebellious inmates need to be put in check and that sends you through an impressive sequence in which you have to dodge a train system while enemies lay in wait. But as you dive deeper in, you'll also be greeted with moments of nostalgia designed to catch the attention of a longtime player of Destiny. The main story wraps with an unsettling conclusion after about five or six hours, but then there's more to see in the beautiful Dreaming City which, once unlocked, will give longtime players a peek into some interesting backstory elements. This location also addresses one of my longtime gripes with the patrol system. Adding an NPC that you actually talk to is a subtle, appreciated touch. The main draw of the Dreaming City is the Blind Well's tough wave-based missions, which are a great way to farm for certain items. It still requires some odd networking trickery to get a full group in, though, and that's unfortunate. <laughs> All of these additions are complemented by a complete rework of the sandbox. If you want to wield any crazy loadout like three shotguns, you can do that now, which adds more flavor to the mix. Armor and weapons of the same type will have unique aspects that encourage you to keep different sets until you get that perfect drop. This makes Destiny 2 feel mysterious again, and each drop is exciting right now as it could be that perfect roll or bring you one light level closer to the max and the new bow weapon is great for finishing off enemies in spectacular fashion. The Crucible benefits most from the sandbox changes. Bungie has finally addressed the time to kill issue so many fans have been asking for adjustments to. There are a few overpowered pieces of armor like Ursa Furiosa, which I've seen allow four supers back to back. Pro tip, don't shoot the shield. Thankfully, Bungie has a good track record of addressing imbalances like that quickly. The superb Gambit mode is unlike anything I've seen before. Facing off in a mix of PvP and PvE challenges is exhilarating, and planning the appropriate strategy with my team gives me a great feeling of camaraderie and accomplishment. While I usually focus on the power level grind, I found myself enraptured in the experience of stopping invaders with my teammates and melting final bosses with our carefully planned strategy that we implemented for an amazing streak of wins. Thankfully, with Forsaken, you can do whatever you enjoy the most to level up, and all of it feels like it's in a great place right now, thanks to all the system changes. There's a collection tab that allows you to delete your old gear without losing it, and a triumph tab which finally brings lore into Destiny 2. Hopefully Bungie makes a decision about the random rolled items soon though, so we can grab those too. 
Infusion requires gathering resources at old destinations, and I think it's a smart way to reward you for returning there. The Masterwork Core shortage is going to present a difficult choice for some, but I prefer having tough decisions to make about what comes up with my power level climb instead of blindly leveling up all your gear. With Destiny 2 Forsaken, I keep coming back to that old aphorism, a rising tide lifts all boats. This update not only has improved Destiny 2 in some very meaningful ways for those buying the expansion, but also for people who didn't. Thus far, Bungie has delivered on all fronts and then some. They've not only brought back what made me love the first Destiny when it was at its best, but also added a ton of requests that fans, myself included, have wanted for years. For more on Destiny 2, keep it right here on IGN. So go out on your terms, with a gun in your hand and loot in your pockets. <laughs> Only way to live.